Hello and welcome to Elmer's Restoration for the third video. Thanks for watching the first couple, it's appreciated. So when I left you last time, there was a bit more flooring, albeit not very much. Since then, as you can see, I've taken away nearly the full side, um, right up to the back heel board, which at the end here, where it meets the trunnion to the rear subframe, is a bit wrecked, so it's needing a new one either a new end or a full new heel board once I dig a bit deeper into that I'll know how much I need to replace so the centre tunnel here as you can see I've taken away most of the surface rust that was on it um, <coughs> what I've done here I lined off with tape took it back as much as I could I've cut some of the section of the floor away what I plan to do is I've got a, an air tool a flanging tool and an air punch in one that I'm going to try and reshape this and I'm going to attach the floor with a, an overlapping joint plug weld it on top um, just to give a bit of extra strength and I will seam weld along the underneath just because that's a requirement for the, the MOT in this country it has to be a like for like replacement plans today I'm going to try for a fit for the floor see the best fit I can get I'm also going to look at trying to replace this here just with a panel by uh, marking up, cutting out, getting a template and cutting new steel and welding it in. So hopefully I'll get most of that done today. Um, so that's kind of where I am at the moment. It's quite lengthy work getting the preparation right, but you need to get the preparation right before you put the, the new floor in. When it is in, I'm going to try and attach it with pop rivets um, to get a close contact with the, the other sides um, before welding and then I'm going to keep some pop rivets in just for extra strength as well um, obviously I couldn't just do it with pop rivets that wouldn't be strong enough and again it would fail MOT and wouldn't be any use this bit here the whole inner, inner wing it's pretty much destroyed all the way around as you've seen in previous videos um, so that's going to be replaced once I've got a bit more strength into the frame um, so when I do put the floor on, the lower section of the inner wing, I'm not going to attach because this is all going to come off and I'm just going to fit a whole new unit. So what I'm going to look at at the moment is this area down here. As you can see I'm going to get it marked up, cut, template and then I'll look at getting a nice new piece of metal in there. So. That's, as you can see, the bit taped off under here. What I'm going to cut along here, along here, down here. Make up a template and put the new bit in. I'm going to use that using um, my air cutting disc. As you can see, it's a smaller bit there. <coughs> which means it's easier to get into these angles than the, the bigger one. It hasn't got as much power as the bigger one, but it gives more accuracy and um, a cleaner cut. So, let's get cutting. So, see that's bit cut out there. Quite a neat cut. That bit there, that'll go get dressed up with filler. Right, the good thing also, the bit that's come off, you can see it's pretty nasty underneath. Um, a lot of that's sealer, um, but obviously rust underneath. So what I'll do is I'll use this as my template, put it straight onto some new steel, and then I'll see how that fits into the, the new section here. So this is just a bit of the sheet of steel I've got, it's not too bad, it's quite a large bit for £20 and it'll come in handy, especially with restorations, it'll save quite a bit of money for simple pieces like this. So I'll just try and flatten this as much as I can. Try and find a decent bit of steel, and I'm just going to mark around just with a pencil. So, as we can see, the pencil's marked around this bit. I'm going to replace this bit with the whole new shiny bit. Just a case of cutting along here, all the way along with uh, an angle grinder, and testing it to see if it fits. So, old part, 
template made, cut, new part. Um, something very satisfying and getting the rot out of your menu and putting new parts in. This one, as the most, has got quite a lot of rot. Um, best advice I could give with this is take your time um, and do it right. You'll get times where you just feel tired and you just want to rush it and you feel I want to give up but what I do when I feel like that is I just stop and leave it for another day because these are little bits that nobody ever sees but you know they're the foundations of the car they're underneath and if you're solid underneath then it's just solid on the top and I'd rather do it right than have to come back and do it at a later date so take this piece up here just check it to see for a fit you're better cutting too much and too little because you can always grind away so as you can see this is where the, the new part goes in here and that's a fairly good fit so what I'm going to do is I'll stick a magnet on here hold it in place get my MIG welder just tack weld it so it's held in place and then just go around it um, and we'll see how we get on from there so two ways I can attach the metal until it's tack welded on. First, just a magnet. Hold the two sheets in place next to each other. Next is one of these wee clips. What happens is this comes loose, the sheet goes between there and it holds it in place. The good thing with this, especially with long sheets, is it leaves about a between a one and two mil gap, which is um, ideal for welding the two sheets together. What I'll do is I'll take it to the car and I'll show you how both of them work. So normally this would sit here, you'd loosen this off. It would sit here, it would hold the two pieces of metal together. It's quite fiddly here because, because of this joint so it's a bit bulky to fit in there. So probably the preferred method for me is just going to be this magnet. Until you get the magnet in place. Just make sure you're getting it lined up the way you want to stay. You obviously you want a a gap along here so that you can make weld and plug it. Um, so you're going to fuse both bits of the metal together. Once I've got a couple of tack welds in here and here, I can remove the magnet and that'll be it and held in place. Um, the important bit once it's welded. Um, tack welder in places you do different bits tack weld all along don't do just there 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 and all the way along because what will happen with that is the metal will start to distort and shrink and pull um, and all be disshaped so you allow it to cool once you've put a bit in again it's time consuming but it's worth doing right so I'm just going to get the MIG welder set up put a couple of tacks in and I'll come back to you so that's me tack welded a couple in place as you can see here. Um, if you can move it the way light. As you can see it's um it's quite strong there. I could snap that off if I put force on it. Obviously it's meant to be seam welded all the way along. That's purely hold in place. I mean that's quite hot to the touch because of the heat that's just been put in that. So I'll let that cool for a bit. Then I'm just gonna work my way around bit by bit, putting more tacks in. I'm not going to attach this side um, because, like I said before, I'm going to attach a new inner wing here. So let us cool a bit and then I'm going to go around the tacks and we'll come back once I've put more around here. Um, every MIG welder is different. This is the one I've got here, it's a Clark MIG Pro 19, sorry, Clark Weld MIG Pro 90. Um, the wire feed setting I've got here is just between 5 and 6 and I'm doing this on setting 1 minimum. It's trial and error to see what's best for you, depending on the depth of the metal, the heat, the new metal you're putting in, how much rust there is. It's, I would always recommend doing it on some scrap metal first to see how you get on and then going on to the mini. Again, it's all part of the, the fun of a project. So, like I say, once it's been tack welded all the way around, um, depending on how much you actually put on, Depends on how much you'll have to spend on grinding back. Um, there's quite a lot on this one, just the awkwardness to get to the angle. Like I said before, I'm no any expert at MIG welding, I'm learning as I go, which is the best way. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this back um, and see what other areas need to be filled. Now I'll check it underneath. There's quite a lot of layers of um, sealer and etc underneath um, stone chip and all that. So I'll need to scrape that away and check underneath. But I'll grind back and see what I'm left with then. So my glue I'll did and round it off. Yeah, it's um if I can get out of the way of the sun here. See it's been dressed off a bit. I'm not too concerned about how clean it is because it's gonna be under the floor panel that overlaps here. Um what I'm gonna do once I can get access to underneath, I'm gonna uh, weld underneath as well just just to keep it consistent so there's not any holes. Um it's quite solid here now, you know, it's not going anywhere. Still to be attached under here to the inner wing panel once I get that. Um what I am gonna do is just put a very fine layer of filler over just to keep this flat when I'm putting the floor on um, and then I'm going to give it a quick spray paint so that's what I'm going to do just now so um, I made the filler up this is just the stuff I've been using here easy sand um, eyes upon just made up by basically the guide is about a golf ball filler to a pea size of hardener obviously if you want to harden it quicker you use more hardener if you want it to take longer you use more filler but I don't want to be taking too much off here, I'm not too concerned what it looks like. So I've put a very fine layer on. What I'm going to do is give that a sand down once it's dried, a spray over, and then that's that part ready. I'm quite happy with that, like I say. It's taken probably a couple of hours, but I'm not wanting it to look particularly nice. I just want it to be solid. Um, and what I'll do is I'll come back, I'll show you that once it's been sanded and it's been primed with etch primer. So, as we can see, this is the final part here. Um, if it had been going to be on show, I would have sanded it, so you can't tell the difference. It's a wee bit bumpy there, um, however, for what it's to be, you can see it's now solid. The underneath, it's got penetration as well. There's quite a lot of... Um, it's hard to see with the sun here. And I've primed that as well, it's primed to stop any rust getting in. There's quite a lot of stone chip under here. Um, and all the way back. That's going to be a fun challenge getting all that off, but that repair's been done at the moment, so I'm happy with that. The next stage, I'm going to get the floor trimmed better to fit along the centre in here. Got a few prepares to do here and there, there's little holes here which should just um, get done with plug welding that, sanding um, and that's pretty much all I've got at this stage I'll keep you up to date, hopefully the next stage is looking at doing something with this and getting the floor, flat, floor, floor fitted and then I can look at getting the rear subframe off and looking behind here so I've got a lot to come but again thanks for watching and I'll give you an update as soon as I can.